Hi, this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bellows Designs. I love flowers, and this time of year when we start seeing daisies blooming is one of my favorite. This video will be made using brush or crystals and a fun technique for overlapping your design onto the white border we will create. So let's take a look at the supplies that we're going to be using today. We will start out by using a Lavinia Multifarious Smooth and Supreme. Um, you can take the 7 by 7 and cut it down to be 4 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 quarter inches. We will then do a border around the back and with that I've just taken a piece of cardstock, cut that to be 5 inches by 5 inches. For my card base, I took a, a piece of cardstock and cut it to be 10 and a half inches along the long end and, and five and a quarter inches on the short end and then just fold that over to make our card base. The stamps that we're going to use today will be the Sweet Poppy. It's the Daisies A5 stamp set and we will be using this large one right here. For our sentiment, we will be using the Cardio Wise Words Collection. Today we're going to use the one that says difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. For the inks that we will be using for our stamping, for our black ink, we're going to use the Versifying Claire Nocturne. And then we will be using the Distress Ink Mustard Seed and Walnut Stain. We're going to be creating our background using Brush O Crystals. The two colors that we're going to be using today will be the Sunburst Lemon and the Orange. You see that on the top I've just poked a little hole in the top of them. Um, with the Brush O Crystals you'll find that you don't need a whole lot and um, so you just sprinkle them out of the top. It's a whole lot easier than trying to take the top off and risk spilling and that type of thing. So anyway, that is how I do those. Um, we will also be using a blending brush and a little paint brush. I will be using um, just a, a little paint palette. You can also just use little jars or whatever you have handy, but um, I have these. Those are fairly inexpensive, and so I picked up a few of those. Um, I will also be using my stamping platform. Um, you can probably see right here I have got a sticky grid down. This just allows me to not have to use magnets um, to hold my cardstock in place. We will be putting our card together using um, an adhesive running tape like this. I like to use this when I do demonstrations because it does pretty quickly or if you like to you can also use a paper glue. Um, the Ultra Bond adhesive is one that I have used quite often and like a lot. It's got the very fine point tip on the end of it. Um, I'm also going to be using the um, Tim Holtz the alcohol ink blower because I want to try and see if I can't get some little bursts and move the um, brushes around a little bit on the surface. And then um, I have my heat tool to speed things along and dry up the uh, surface so that we can move quickly through the process. And of course, so that means I'm going to be using water. So I've just got a little mister bottle here um, that I'll be using. So let's go ahead and get started working on our project. So the first thing that I want to start out doing is creating our white border. Um, I have made mine to be about one half inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, white cardstock that I have cut to the four and three quarters by four and three quarters, and I am going to tape it off. I have chosen to use a painter's tape. Um, the Sweet Poppy Low Tack um, tape might work. Um, I have not used it uh, for this type of thing. I want to make sure that I get a good tight seal so I don't get a whole lot of bleed over um, with my um, uh, when, I'm, when I'm trying to work on uh, doing the, the border, um, putting all the ink and the water on. We don't want it to go underneath the edge. So what I'm going to do with my grid here, I love this work surface because it does grid it off for me. I'm going to look for my one half inch line. So I've lined this up 
on the line right here. And then I'm going to take my piece of tape. And actually what I'm going to do is take a little piece and just stabilize it for just a minute so that I don't wiggle it around while I'm getting my tape down. And I'm going to go to the one half mark, one half inch mark and just lay that down across there and then push down really well so that I can feel like I'm getting a really good seal. All right, and then I will go ahead and do the one at the top. I'll apologize, I don't know if my head will get in the way when I'm trying to get up here on this top part to line it up, but so again, I'm going to do a half of an inch. Take that down, make sure it sticks really well. And do the other two sides. Okay, so now that we have got our tape down, we are ready to go ahead and start working on doing our background. And so here you can kind of see what the finished product of the first one that I did. Now, obviously with brushos or any kind of um, uh, technique like this, you're not going to have identical. Uh, you can never do the same thing twice again, but we're just going to try and get the same effect. So what I'm going to start out doing is just tapping my sunburst lemon just getting some crystals onto the background and I know it's probably hard to see but you don't really need a whole lot you can always add more if you'd like to and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spritz some water and this will start activating it now, you don't have to do this, but I kind of like the effect of kind of blowing down on it. It kind of sometimes gives a, like a burst effect. Then I can go back in if I have some places that I don't feel like I've got enough color. Add some in. Some will go ahead and, and react with the water that's on there. But I'm going to go ahead and spritz again. to give it just a little bit more moisture there. And like I said, you don't have to do this, but I just kind of like to be able to move it around just a little bit. All right, so now we've got a start there. So I'm going to go ahead and dry with my heat tool before we add our orange. Okay, and if you have some spots that are really super duper wet, you can go ahead and blot them just a little bit with a paper towel, and that will also help speed it up. So now we're going to go to our orange and do the same thing. We're just going to sprinkle the crystals onto the surface of our card. And again, you can do as little or as much as you want. You can always go back and add more if you think you need more. And then I'm going to go ahead, like I had done before, do a little bit of the blowing to get a little burst, some bursts on it. Add a little bit more right there in the center. So just play with it until you get the look that you like. 
the more water you have, the less of the um, crystal bursts, I guess, if you want to call them that, will, will show up. So as you can see here in the middle, I've got a lot more liquid, and on the edges here, I've got a lot more of the crystals. So I may just add a little bit more of the crystals in the middle. Dabbed up some of the excess water so that I could just get the starburst look. And we'll just allow those to kind of burst out a little bit on their own. And then once again, take our drying, our heat tool. Just a little bit more in the center if I can. And dry that up. Right, and again, I love the orange, so I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna add quite a bit, so I can get a little bit more burst with the orange. Just a bit more, and again, this is gonna be a process where you have to play around with it until you get the results that you like. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting that orange to really start popping out. Mix it, blow some of it around just a little. Maybe get a little more water. There we go. That's the look I was looking for. And of course, if you want to just let it sit and dry naturally, you can do that as well. I just am always very impatient. And so I like to go ahead and and dry it with the, with the heat tool. Now, um, with brush sometimes you have a little bit of the crisp, extra crystals kind of on the surface. So I'm just going to take a paint brush and just kind of brush them off so that I have it smooth and don't have all the little extra crystals on there. Okay, and I made a discovery that sometimes if I add just a little bit of Distress Ink over the top, like this, this is the mustard seed, that it just seems, seems to uh, make it pop to me a little bit more and, and kind of um, blends it all together really, really pretty. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this mustard seed and with my blending brush, I'm just going to lightly go over the surface. And I haven't really figured out why to me. It just to, it seems like it makes the colors just a little bit brighter. Um, it may not. Maybe it's just in my head, but I just like the way that it looks just to add a little bit more of that on top like that. Alright, so now we are ready to remove our tape. So we will gently peel our tape up to expose our edges. And like I said, you want to do it gently. And I'll see, actually, I tore a little bit too much, so I'm going to have a bit of a of a rough surface. Um, this is why the low tack, uh, the Sweet Poppy low tack, works really well. Um, like I said, though, I just haven't really tested it um, yet on if the um, brush in the water won't go under the edge of my border. Looks like I'm going to pull a little bit more of that up, but that will be okay. So we'll gently... And now we have got our nice border with our brush -o background in the center. 
So now we are ready to go ahead and start working on uh, our stamps. So I am going to get my stamping platform out and I am going to just place my card in the center on my stamping platform. I'm going to let me move some of the things out of the way so I don't knock them off the table while we're working with our stamping platform. All right, so now we have got that down. So we're going to start out with our daisy stamp. Now what I want is I want for this daisy stamp to go off the edge. So it's going to go off the edge of our um, background square and it's also going to go ahead and go off of the edge of our card, actual card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that attached in the right spot and then I'm going to take some scrap pieces of paper here because I don't want the ink to get all over my sticky grid. So I'm going to line that up in the places where my stamp will overlap. And let me get one more thing out of the way here. All right. And so we're now ready to go ahead and ink up our stamp. So we're going to start with the Versifying Claire Nocturne. Be sure and ink your stamp up well so that we get a nice crisp image. That's one of the nice things of why I really enjoy using a stamping platform is that uh, if I stamp my image and I don't feel like it's quite, oops, sorry about that, I just dropped my drying heat tool. Anyway, um, I, I feel like if I don't get a really good image that I really, really like, then the nice thing about the stamping platform is that I can go right back over it again add a little more ink and do it so that it's the way I want it to look. Just apply a little bit of pressure. Ah, and you know what I forgot? I bought a nice little handy dandy pressing tool. That will help me to get a good clean image. We'll use that. Let's see what our image looks like here. Looks pretty nice. It's a little light in the middle there where you get a lot of the dark. So I'm just going to add a little bit more ink to my stamp. And get just a little bit darker of an image. I'm one of those people who really, really likes to have a dark, crisp image when I use my black ink especially. All right. So now we can put our sentiment stamp on. So I'm gonna very quickly, I always like to keep the baby wipe on hand. That way I can go ahead and clean off my stamp pretty quickly so it doesn't get too stained up. And now we will put our sentiment stamp right there. Make sure I got that straight. And then we'll do the same thing. Ink it up.
gently press down get my tape out of the way here so we don't stick our elbow down in it all right and there is our card stamped put the lid on my ink and we don't need the stamping platform right now so we'll go ahead and set that aside all right so now we will take our card and what we're going to do at this point in time is we are going to let me show you the original card here we are going to paint the petals that are showing that are on our white border so that we've kind of got that nice little overlap look the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take like a little palette or like I said a little dish of some kind whatever you've got handy and I put just a little bit of the sunburst lemon in one and the orange into another one And then we're just going to add a tiny little bit of water. And this is basically going to create a little liquid paint that we can paint with. So I've got a little tiny paintbrush here. And mix that around with the water that we added in. And then all I'm going to do is paint all of my petals, first starting with the yellow, just to get a background down. And then I will move on to the orange. So you may have noticed that when I started with the orange, I kind of blobbed it just a little bit instead of making smooth, even strokes like I did with the uh, with the yellow. Um, that's because, to me, the look of the rest of the card kind of has the oranges looking a little on the splotchy side. So I'm going to try and duplicate that kind of effect that we got when we created the background. And with doing that I want just a little bit less water so I get a little bit of the darkness. Excuse me. All right. So now you can kind of see it's starting to blend a little bit to look kind of like the color of the background. So just kind of dabble it in random places and you'll start to get it to look like the background. All right, simple and easy to do. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just hit it with the heat tool again just to dry it up, just a, a touch. now we're going to give it just a little bit of depth and that's where the walnut stain comes in. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try and get some of this yellow off of my yellow and orange off of my paintbrush. So I'm just going to wet it a little bit and try and wipe some of that color out. So with your walnut stain you can go ahead and take your paint palette get a fresh clean spot 
Add a little bit of water in there. You don't need a whole lot again. And then we're just going to wet our brush and then just pick up a little bit of the ink on your paintbrush here and then just add a little bit of the the brown walnut stain there to kind of give it the shadowing in the center. And usually you know the dark the centers of our, the flowers are darker. So we're just going to kind of create that illusion. I'll just go on the top, I'm just going to kind of go around the edges. Now, if you have um, the um, like watercolor pencils, the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils, you can use those as well. Um, the reason I went ahead and used the ink is because some people don't have that. But I'm going to recommend to you right now the watercolor pencils because I love them. I use them all the time. So now we're just going to go in and add just a touch of shadowing here on our petals. So what I'm doing is putting the brown at the uh, top close to the center of the flower and then I'm just going to drag a tiny little bit along one edge. That just gives helps to give our flowers a little bit more dimension. All right, and now we have added just a little bit of dimension to make it uh, look a little more three-dimensional. And that is basically how we do that. It's a very, very simple uh, process. So let's go ahead and start putting our card together. So putting our card together is really a very simple task to do. We are just going to take our piece of artwork and mount it onto our frame. So to do that I am just going to take my little running tape here now with it gets a little wet and you feel like it's um, a little bit bubbly there. Just add a little bit of your tape or glue on the center part so that you can be sure that it's um, definitely going to be uh, down solid all over. Um, I am going to take a piece of white paper because with the black it blends in and I can't get it centered. So hopefully I won't get my head in here while I'm trying to center this. If I do, I'm sorry. I'll try and get it centered without having to get my head into the shot there alright 
And so now we have got that mounted on the frame. We will take our background, do the same thing. Enter our card in the middle of the base card stock. And there you have our card. So I love this project because um, even though it's simple, uh, the, the effect is pretty stunning. Um, I love the brushos and like I said, you never know what you're going to get. Um, my first one had a lot more yellow in it because I went back in and added that orange. Uh, but I like both of them. I think they both look really neat and it's fun. And again, you never know what you're going to get. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial today. I hope you enjoy making this great summer card using the Brusho Crystals for the background and the Sweet Poppy Daisy stamp. Remember to check out the DelBellasDesigns.com website for more tutorials on the design theme page. Have a great day!